are a combination of gearheads. John the instigator, Derek the conservative, Will the builder, Sean the racer, and maybe a guest I invite you to listen in while they sit down, have a drink, and discuss cars. More subscribe to the podcast with no driving gloves. Time now for the ride. As everybody's saying hi there, welcome. We're, we're going to hit you up early. We're doing some prep work for a change here at No Driving Gloves. Boy, now everybody's sounding like a, a radio DJ. Uh, all four of us are here tonight. We're, we want to call it video recording, trying out some of the new streaming software. Don't You aren't going to get to see it, but streaming is in the near future. It's going to stream uh, right off the cliff and become a waterfall. <laughs> You aren't going to get to we're see We're still it. waiting for Nor everybody to get all the technical to, stuff. But, and the, uh, I'm, we're still, I'm still learning some uh, of the technical stuff, but this is kind of a in-house test. But um, how are the uh, three musketeers doing out there? What if, what if we say terrible? This one's doing pretty good. I have nothing right, to complain okay. about. So. Mm-hmm. And don't bother us with your problems. When we say all, uh, and uh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I'll get back but to you. You're probably. Are you doing? Ter- are you well, really doing terrible? He's got that new yeah, dirt floor building. So. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Actually, I was really disappointed because I, I pulled in the house. Yeah, I pulled in the it's driveway true. tonight, and the two you piles just keep sweeping, of, and you can't you know, figure out why you can't get the dirt out. Getting the uh, bed prep for the the pad prep for concrete. Um, you know, we're still in two piles, and they hadn't moved them today so which was the schedule but you know it's veterans day they're supposed to be off by the way everybody happy veterans day that's when we're recording they were here at when i was leaving the driveway this morning getting equipment out of their truck uh, then they then they realized what day it was i will we'll give them a break it rained yesterday and it was raining today i assume the bobcat would have torn the snot out of my yard so they decided not to uh, not to run the Bobcat around. That was a solid call. They are forgiven. Oh, goodness. What are we talking about tonight, John? Well, as I was saying, we actually prepped for a couple of episodes, and so far we're staying on our new new schedule. And because I like stuff, and I want stuff, and in case anybody would like to get me stuff, by the end of the show, you'll know what I want. We've done Christmas episodes before. What will we want for Christmas? But we tell you like three days before Christmas. Does that do you any good? No, I don't think so. So we're going to discuss some stuff tonight on the show. Or the idea is these are things that we as car people would love to have, or maybe we have and we think every car person should. We'll have affiliate links up on uh, the website for many of these items. I don't think everything's going to be available through our affiliates, but We'll put a list up in the show notes and things so you can order this stuff, possibly on a Black Friday special. You can order it and ship it to us. Um, Send us an email. We'll give you some shipping information. You know what the thing, the thing that's bothering me is I cannot find a 93 that matched. I, I had a 93 black Beretta GT, gray fabric interior. Um, and then I had the, like teal green and and pinkish colored uh, GT decals. The only problem with it, it was an automatic. I would have loved for it to have been a stick shift, but it was an automatic. What's really bothering me, Derek, is the fact that you want a Beretta and I want a Chevette. Why why do we want those? (laughs) I wouldn't mind a Chevette either, especially the early Chevette, like what's behind you right now. The the very very earliest years. I think they're great looking. It's a neat little car. Well, I, the first, I mean, so the first car I actually had was the GTO and you know, we were restoring it. But then once we realized kind of how rare that car was and probably wasn't a good car to drive to school. So we bought a totaled out Beretta and I rebuilt the Beretta and I absolutely love, I mean, they're a fantastic car. They're way faster than a high schooler needs a car to be. Um, you know, fortunately, my parents don't listen to this podcast. Um, but yeah, it was. I I love them to this day. I still love the Beretta. I, I tell you, they made badass looking drag cars out of. Yes. Them. Yeah. Beretta made a really good looking race car. Like, yeah, the Cavalier made a good looking drag car. 
The Beretta and the Cavalier look really good. And uh, last weekend, oh, yeah. the Cavalier was really good looking car. The Z24, like the pro stock cars. Um, and there was there was a Calais. There was an Oldsmobile Calais at Huntsville last weekend for the the uh, oh god was it Radial Fest at Huntsville. And uh, I mean, that's that's just a good looking car, man. It's a really good looking race car. This that era was cool watching Glidden and Warren Johnson battle it out. I, I like oh, it. And the, and the Thunderbird. Yeah, man. Red yeah, and white. Man. Bob Glidden. Yeah, man. He was a bad dude. There was an '88 Turbo Coupe. At Radial Fest. Now, there was an 88 Turbo Coupe T-Bird at Radial Fest, and it was running the X275 class, and it was really, really cool. Like, I, I walked up to it. I walked up on it from the back end, and I was like, ooh, it's got a nice butt. And then um, I kind of got around the side, and I was like, ooh, it's really nicely done on the inside. It's got a nice cage. It's, it's put together really well. And then I got to the front, and that's where I found the problem. It had a big block Chevy in it. And I, I understand why. Mm-hmm. but i just why <laughs> like, because you can go fast on a budget I, I know i know but it just it felt wrong i felt like betrayed i felt it just, it just doesn't feel right no he just wants the big block chevy we know what you want for christmas uh a turbo coupe with a big block chevy there we go we started it off no i want it i just want a turbo coupe <laughs> I just want a turbo coupe. I'll take the turbo. I'll take the two three. I, I would love another eighty eight turbo coupe. I would. I just loved that car. I had a ninety three super coupe. Loved that car. It doesn't need to have a big block in it. Just give me the stock motor. That's what I want for Christmas. I yeah, that's definitely what I want for Christmas. The dark blue eighty eight turbo coupe. Find one. Cricket. Cricket. Is there anyone out there willing to give one away? I was still looking for the uh, Beretta that I saw sell, but I can't seem to find it. Wait, what for? What did what, what was, was big? Money? It was it was a it was Honor one of the famous that drag cars, right? It was like what? Are you saying one hundred and twenty dollars? Like a hundred, like a hundred and twenty? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? No, it was a. I, I, right, right. I'm saying what color was it? If if I if I'm remembering correctly, it was one hundred and twenty k for a ninety three Beretta GT with like. 28 miles on it or something mine was black man black with gray interior i love that car i can't probably said that haven't i that is crazy red i guarantee you most of them are red yeah black my my buddies was a maroon what was the the i'm air quoting when i say this my mom wrecked there was a hot rod version of the corsica what was what was that I can't remember what, that, what 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 it was like GTZ or something like that. Well, the LT the Corsica LTZ was the five door hatchback. That's what you're talking. I was gonna say the Beretta was the sport the the GT version of the Corsica. Yeah, yeah. And then they had the GTU. They had the GT. They had the GTU. Okay. Uh, the Z Beretta was the Z. Uh, what Z package did they put on that? 34 Z, Z34 is that right? It so. was the 24. Uh, no, Z, Z34 yeah. Z, no, it was a Z26 Beretta because it was the Z, Z26 Z Z34 Lumina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, that's right. Oh my god, the Lumina. Oh. <laughs> oh. Here, here. Now, now, this is an embarrassing story, and fortunately, he called me. My dad was bored one day. It was was June, so it was baseball season. The baseball games were boring. And he called me one day and he said, I'm looking at a couple of cars and the Lumina Z34, or do I buy a Lexus? And then was it, do I buy a two door or a four door Lexus? (laughs) And (laughs) I did, he did end up with the four door Lexus, but at some point he was cross shopping the two. A Lumina and a Lexus. All of our parents had probably done that at one time there because my, my father was cross shopping a, uh, oh God, what was he cross shopping with the 300M? It was like a really nice car and a 300M. And the 300M was okay. It just literally fell apart within like miles after purchase. Um, I think it was a decent looking car, but it, it oh, had a little bit of a longevity issue. It's quiet again. 
<laughs> yeah, I was I was trying to give a little lull for a a, a change here, so we can uh, kind of jump into all I want for Christmas is. Uh, 1993 Beretta GT, black with gray interior, fabric, cloth interior, uh, automatic transmissions. Okay, I'd prefer the stick shift, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'd be good with that. Is that all? That's literally all you want for Christmas? That's <laughs> We're wrapping right, it up. Good show, it's guys. Done. Good show. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking, well, this could be a $18 purchase, or this could be a $120,000 purchase. I was waiting for Derek to give us a mileage range. Do you want a restorable Beretta? No, I'd prefer one that's just in driving condition. I've got way too many restore projects going right now. That's why the barn had to be built. I'd say it'd be the same age as the cars in the barn by the time you got to it, right? Exactly. Which one? I want Derek's barn for Christmas. I, I need a garage, man. That would be like if I had one Christmas wish, it would be to actually be able to go ahead and put the garage in and and figure out exactly where we're going to put it. Is I haven't seen my Mercedes in like six months. It's just what? Hey, you know what you do? You do what I did. You just make it, just figure it out and make it happen. Because I've been here in Kentucky for three and a half years saying the same thing. And finally it was just figure out how to make it happen and make it happen. Right, Will? You just got to make it happen. Got to pull the trigger, man. It sounds pull the trigger. Simple. Do it. Make that phone call. You only live once. Do you? Are you sure? No, John. As the meme says, you only die once. You live every day. So philosophical. I've been trying to get this guy as a guest and not having a lot of luck getting through his people, but I think I've got a new connection. But he wrote a book a while ago called The Man and His Watch. And it basically highlighted expense, nice watches. I'm not even going to say expensive and rare watches, but nice watches. You know, they're four figures. And I do have a watch fetish and a lot of car guys have watch fetishes. He's now come out with a new book called The Man and His Car. And he does the exact same thing as he went around and he interviewed like 20 different car collectors. I think like Shaquille O'Neal and of course um, Seinfeld and they tell stories about kind of their favorite cars. And it's, it's not, you know, Oh, you know, it's not Shaquille O'Neal talking about his Escalade on 26 inch spinners with Superman badges. I actually think he liked an international truck or something. I don't own the book yet, so I'm not sure. But this, this is a an, really long way to say you want this book for Christmas. Well, I'm I'm really saying this, this, I think this is book is a good thing to buy uh, anybody for Christmas. It comes in a kind of a slip cover, or the book slides in and out, i.e., slip cover. Um, Twenty seven bucks. I mean, it's a uh, just came out in October too, so most car people won't have it. Time for me to reach out and go ahead and get the author on Matt Henrik. H R H R A N E K. It's kind of a funny spelling, but a man in his car, Google that, or a man in his watch, and they'll kind of cross reference. And I think Amazon right now has a uh, buy three for the price of two. So you could get a man in his car, a man in his watch, and another book and only be out like 53, 54 so bucks. Literally, Derek wants a $120,000 Beretta. I want a garage, and John wants a book. We're old. We're we're really old. We're really old. Like what? Like literally, I feel like the five year old me is going. No, dude, you want an RC car. That's what you want. You want Hot Wheels. You want all. You want enough Hot Wheels track to basically make a track all the way around your house. That's what you really sh- should should want. But it's not what I want anymore. It's really weird. I laid out a scale Nurburgring for to build as a slot car track at my own. Mm property in virginia never did get to build it that was going to be like a almost a one mile track it was you know 12 scale type thing and all the curves and you know couldn't afford to buy scale electric track it was going to have to be an outdoor plywood track etc but kind of the same thing put the hot wheel track out so will where are you at on this game well you know what i want is a uh probably the same thing i've said the last 
five years. It, <laughs> you already got the pool. <laughs> I never did say I really wanted a pool for Christmas, but Will know. wants a green screen. That was a present he bought for his family. That wasn't for Will. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, a thirty-six Ford three-window coupe. If you got to buy me something, buy me that. Now, you know, some stuff that would be cool to buy for your, you know, car buddies or your spouse or whatever, you know, buy them some driving gloves. Then you take them off and listen to no driving gloves. He is, he's plugging away, man. I'm telling you, man. Well, I guess this is the last year for the podcast. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean there's a bunch of cool things out there for car people um you know i wouldn't mind having some cool like automotive paintings stuff like that to you know hang up in my office and you know get rid of this treadmill thing behind me you know and hang up some pictures you know it'd be kind of cool you know i ha- i have a ton of automotive art in my warehouse and i have no walls to hang it on <laughs> <laughs> so think if i had anything you would want see john has a john has a warehouse full of christmas gifts for car guys and he's asking for there one. you go Sounds well i was going to point out it was since we're all plugging if you go to the website and you fill out there's a pop-up that comes up you, we'll send you some no driving glove stickers you can give them to your buddies anybody there you go. anybody free. goes there gets gets yeah free free christmas yeah, uh, no driving gloves to you. You know, I was thinking we could give you no driving gloves, and we send you an empty box with the sticker in it. Hey, I I seen something the other day that was pretty cool. I'd like to have it's a uh, like a wireless charger for your phone that goes in your car. You know, that you can kind of stick up on the windshield, and you know, you put, you put your phone on it and it charges it. You know, I think that's kind of cool. Our Cadillac's got this funky wireless charger built into it. And anybody who's got a late model Cadillac has the same issue. And it's kind of brilliant. It kind of really sucks because the Cadillac it's it, it, oh. <laughs> the Cadillac infotainment system in 15 and 16 and I think even 17 didn't even include Apple CarPlay. But it had wireless charging. Our 15 has a wireless charging. And you put 16. You, no, 15, 15 went to Apple CarPlay. Action, uh, our, ours does not have Apple CarPlay available. Really? No. Our, our 15 Denali does. No, well, it's well, a 16, my bad. 16, De, yeah. Denali, 16 went, well, Denali is GMC. Cadillac is Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but they have the same crap. Come on. I so always. our. I be- I believe the Cadillac use they use a stupid touch screen system that goes bad regularly to the point they Cadillac is just flat out of stock. It's amazing all the parts Cadillac's out of stock of. I think it's actually a different head unit, everything or screen. But you push basically the this little section of the dashboard and it opens up and you put your phone in there and then you close the dashboard and then your phone wirelessly charges. However, you can't answer the phone. You can't do anything with your music. You can't, I mean, your, your phone's locked away from you, so you're a safe driver, but you can't do anything with your phone, which, like I said, you probably shouldn't be anyway. What but. was the thinking behind that there? That's just weird, man. Yeah, I mean... Safe driving. Yeah. Our Denali has the wireless charger there on the console. Yep, that's yeah, where it my, should be. My phone. My phone don't fit in it, you know, it's it's too big. I have a case that I've had on the same model of case designed for each phone since my iPhone 4, I think. And it's the same company, blah, blah, blah. I've had great luck with the case. I've had great luck with their screen protectors. Their belt clip kind of sucks. But I've never cracked a screen, broke a screen, cracked a phone. So I always buy the same case and, you know, it's, not an outer box or anything, but it's quarter inch thick rubber. So my wireless charging on mine doesn't work either. You can buy phone cases that that accept it now, though, that are thick like that. 
it's the complete design of my case that I like. It sits a little bit above the screen. It's just, I just trust it. It's better for me to buy two $20 cases in the life that I own a phone than it is to risk breaking the phone. But here's another idea for a Christmas present. If you're on Verizon, they have, um, they're doing a big push with their insurance company. Any phone on Verizon can be insured retroactively. So if you've had a phone for two years with a broken screen and you haven't got it fixed, you can buy the uh, insurance before like December 3rd or December 5th and then turn it in and pay the $50 deductible and get your phone fixed. Is that really worth it There's in the long run? Or really? Oh, yeah. I, if you're somebody who commonly breaks your phone, yes. If, if, if you're me and you have $2, okay. yeah, it's worth it. Okay. Yeah, I just... I. I was wondering how much it actually cost to have a screen replaced. Because for me, I hadn't I hadn't broke a phone in probably eight years. On so. a uh, new iPhone, it's something like three what? or four hundred bucks to get a screen replaced. Oy. And the screen you get it replaced with is junk. They don't put the standard screen back in it. You don't get an Apple screen. You get a you know aftermarket crap screen that you look at it and it breaks. Wind long something. Something something with China stamped on it? Only screen I ever broke was on my iPad Pro, and it was humorous. I sat it on the ca- ca- counter, and not quite far enough, and it fell flat on the glass, shattered. And then, you know, say a couple words that I would normally bleep out. Picked it back up, sat it back on the counter identically to what I did before, and I know it because it fell flat on the glass again so i broke it twice (laughs) twice in like 30 seconds and i had one i had one of those extended warranty deals on that computer or that so 50 bucks sent it back got got the the ipad back they actually delivered it to my neighbor who hated us and so good thing i saw the ups truck or i'd never got it back but got it and the thing worked great for three or four months and then it just flat stopped working and I took it to the Apple store and they, and I said something about the screen breaking and they said, oh, you can't replace the screen on an iPad Pro uh, because of where the batteries are located and everything. They probably punctured a battery. We normally, if you, you know, if you do break it, we just go ahead and give you another iPad Pro. Okay. Um, I came in ready to buy another iPad Pro. Are you going to give me one? And yes, sure enough, they gave me an iPad Pro and I... <laughs> And that one's still working to today and never been dropped or never been broke. You better find something to wrap on real quick. It's there. Both you and Will. Both both of you guys just (laughs) just invited disaster into your life. My screen's already broke, so I'm (laughs) good. All the insurance. You just buy them. Zara called her insurance on her phone the other day because she broke her screen for the second time. And the guy came out and... You know, they come to your house to do it, believe it or not. What? Guy came out and they took off her screen protector, and the screen protector was what's broke. The phone was perfectly fine. Nice. So he went away <laughs> and they never charged her the deductible or anything. Oh, it was I one of those feel bad for the guy, but yeah, she swore my last phone, my iPhone seven S, whatever I had last was cracked and I wouldn't get, you know, trade in value, blah, blah, blah. And that was just a screen protector that was cracked, you know, that whatever tempered glass that you put on them. But let's get back to cars. We've talked about you can buy phone insurance for your significant other. You can get a wireless charging for your phone, for your car or an adapter. We've talked about wanting a ber- low mileage Beretta, um, a three window. Well, do, you want, do you want like a real like talk or just stay with the Beretta? I don't care. Well, just throwing out everything. I mean, I'm trying to keep it a little yeah. bit. Last time we got a little bit crazy and we ended up everybody asking for multi-thousand dollar tools. And Well, that's okay. I mean, this, you know, if you go on. Uh, I got a better chance of somebody sending me a $25 book than somebody sending you a Beretta. Of course they do. That's that. that's true. Well, you know, what what I really need because I went to use it tonight to pull a gas tank out of a car after work and I found out that my LED little uh, work light, uh, you know, wireless little LED nice work light evidently it doesn't hold a charge anymore cuz I charged it up the other day and when I went to use it today it didn't turn on. So, I do need one of those. That's a good one. 
We use LED work lights like crazy at the shop. A lot of those have have cha- uh, replaceable batteries. I don't know if you know it's integrated into yours or not, but all my Snap-on and all my Makita, I'm running aftermarket batteries with now, purchased through Amazon. Well, let's just say this isn't you know this <laughs> isn't Snap-on brand or Makita brand. It's probably something uh, somebody got me for Christmas five six years ago that was uh, you know from this is Harbor Freight. Or I would say swap our, swap know, meat uh, tool sale. <laughs> Yeah, it could have been, you know. I'll tell you what I need. I need a portable grill, something you can put in a car, take it somewhere, and do some cooking. That's what I need, a portable. And Coleman have you covered for that? Ooh, we're asking for Is stuff. There... You want it to be, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do you want it to be charcoal, or do you care if it's, like, gas-powered? I'm a, I'm a charcoal kind of guy. But I guess oh, because I've got a gas one. I'm trying to get rid of. Oh yeah, I'm a charcoal kind of guy. Is there such a thing as a portable big green egg? Would it, would it be a small green egg? They have they have little small big green eggs, and yes, that would be awesome because I cook on my big green egg at least minimum of once a week, most of the Do time. You really, two or three times a week. Yep, that's impressive. There it is, right there. Say, so I grilled out on big my green egg small. <laughs> I grilled out on my infrared grill tonight. So. Oh, your what? It uses infrared technology to grill. So it's not gas. It's not charcoal. It's not wood. You can put wood into it. And uh, Will, Will showing his meat there on the screen. Ooh, meat, Will. That ain't right, Will. Ooh. That ain't right at all, man. That was Monday night. Monday night. It's a little uh, burnt. I know where you live it's now, man. Called- it's called reverse sear, my you friend. You keep showing me stuff like that. I know where you live. I'm just going to show no, up. I know what reverse sear is, but it's not like bleeding. I mean, I prefer them to walk the cow around the kitchen and bring it in the front door when I'm at a steakhouse. I mean, I'll, eat, I'll bring the steak. If you All right. Cook it. So look, look at the chopping block. There is no juice on it. Yeah. Watch this. Bam. You see all that juice? Yep. Blood. Uh, I think you poured a glass of water on it this. still looks it still looks a little on the um medium side not it's a little medium but check this out though i don't know that was enchiladas last night ah i'm going to the posy house for dinner tomorrow you you will eat good up <laughs> i'm just gonna show well, up with it's, it's, gonna show up with arms full of meat and just go here cook this he's in the country in alabama of course yeah i have <laughs> I'm in the country in Alabama and don't have a out. I don't. We don't have an outdoor grill. I have a. I have a big green egg. I have a gas smoker. I have a stick smoker. I have a gas grill, and I have a um, blackstone. <laughs> and, and and he would like to. And he'd like to add a portable grill to that. Right. My stick. My stick smoker can smoke about sixty butts at what? one time. Yeah. Well, dear God, what is it like? Did you like you saw the tanker truck and and it you got a hinged tanker truck? Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. It's on. It's it's on its own trailer. Good Lord. <laughs> do you know? Do you know that, that that there's one of those that actually exists? Yeah. Johnsonville Brats yeah. has a yeah, semi that's a, a grill. It actually, I have a story about it because it almost ran. It almost ran me off the road in uh, one of the passes in going through one of the canyons out in like Arizona. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, it came, it was coming down the mountain and I was in front of it and there were two lanes. There was a slow lane and a fast lane. I was on the freeway and he did not want to go around me in the fast lane. I, I was, I don't even know how fast I was going to try to stay ahead of him, but he nearly ran me off the road. Well, he's not slowing that thing down. He's, well, I understand that, but go around me. I mean, I think I was doing like 95 mile an hour to not get him run over by him. That, Eventually, yes, I moved into the fast lane, let him go undertake me, and I got back over. But not the point of the story. Will is just sitting here just showing us all his meat. He is just showing pictures of his meat everywhere. So um also for christmas gift on my list if anyone wants to head over to prewar.com and um you know just go into the there's a a great uh uh let me let me pull it up because i just had it up and i lost it already 
there is a beautiful 1936 Rolls-Royce 2025 Sports Coupe by Coachcraft uh, up for sale currently on prewarcar.com. Gentlemen, if you'd like to witness this. There you go. Um, I would I would not mind uh, driving that around. We think, Will. Big black Chevy. Oh, yeah. L- LS. Full tubs, mini tub. No, oh, mini, mini, mini tub. Sheet. sheet metal interior. <laughs> mm. <laughs> sheet metal interior, the Rolls Royce. Stop it, dude. What are, you trying, what are you doing to me, man? Let's bring it back. And I'm just going to say, uh, since I'm being reasonable, and I- I'm going to say Bluetooth garage door opener. I'd really like one of those. The Ryobi one what? that Home Depot sells. I don't know what the uh, quality is, but it actually, you can plug various things into it, whether it be a little air compressor. So you have a drop down air compressor for tires, not for tools and various lighting and cameras and stuff. Hang on. Um, Bluetooth garage door opener. Yep. So, I mean, I have a little button I just press and my door comes up. Oh, it's, you can press it from anywhere there, right? Yeah, basically you can open and close your garage door via Bluetooth so that if I am go out to get the mail and I realize, oh, the garbage man's been here and I come up to the garage, I can use my phone to open the garage door. I don't like the keypads. To me, that's not a very secure I would much rather have Bluetooth in my car than use the home link system. I've had home link systems in multiple cars and they are, they're so hard to program. I would just rather have it be part of an app on my phone. All right, I now, of course, I say we're converting the house to hue lights and everything else too. So that, I mean, cause I'm too lazy to get out of bed at night to turn the uh, bedroom lights off. Can, <laughs> we, we can turn it on and off from our phone. Can, um, can you adapt any garage door opener to the Bluetooth thing or how's that work? There are systems you can add. You can add Wi-Fi to it. You can add Bluetooth to it um, and add it to an existing garage door opener. I actually need to replace our garage door opener. So that's why I've been looking. I'm somebody who likes one unit, everything to work together and not try to make two different components work. I mean, if I had a, Chamberlain garage door opener. Maybe I'd buy the Chamberlain add-on piece for that. But the the Home Depot one's just to me so diverse because it's got you know it takes one of their 18 volt batteries and you can plug it. You know it charges that battery, but when the power goes off, obviously that's your obviously that's your battery backup there also. And it just has some certain accessories. They're anywhere between about a I think 130 bucks for a, a base one. I mean, they're not even that much more expensive than a garage door opener to 300, 350. I'll take one of those. Actually, I'll take one, two, three, four, five. I'll take six of those. Six of those? Yeah, I need six. Oh, for, for the shop, too? That means he has six garage doors. No, I have six doors. at my house. Now here's one. Here's one that'll work with your uh, Alexa and Google Assistant. Can I borrow a garage door for a little while? Good lord! <laughs> I got one in my basement. I got three in my Coral shop shine. and two at my house. My shop at my house. That's out of control. Yeah. Five, well, once the barn's done, I'll have five uh, overhead doors at the See? house. One of them is going to be coming out, though, because we're going to re- redo that part of the building. Pull the trigger. <laughs> you're, you're already redesigning your building that's not finished being built? No, 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 no. One of the existing, the, the lean-to oh. portion of the old garage, the brick garage, the lean-to is really funky and doesn't really do much. So we're going to redesign it as kind of the garden shed slash Christine's planting plant area for gardening and all of that so yeah we'll we'll get rid of one overhead door likely i'm gonna need to up my garage game my garage game is weak we, we gotta do something about that john mentioned artwork earlier i and and i just popped a print up behind me from one of my favorite artists man if it, it stefan dufo is his name and Stefan does amazing sculptures and um, some incredible Porsche based art. He's got a, a whole bunch of different cars, but he, he concentrates on Porsche stuff. 
And uh, I would take some Stefan stuff for Christmas. We have four of his prints right now hanging up in our hallway. And uh, I, I would definitely take more. The dude does some amazing stuff. Automotive artwork's always cool. Yeah, check out uh, a dude named Pinstripe Chris. Pinstripe Chris. Yeah, he's on Instagram. I'm gonna check him out. He's on Instagram. I'm check he, him out right now. He's 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 no joke. Oh no, 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 he's no joke. Pinstripe Pinstripe Chris is doing some crazy stuff. Good lord, he's a bad dude. You ever seen any any of uh, Corey Corey St. Clair stuff? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, Corey. I've met Corey a while ago, man. He's that is his airbrush work, man. You like when you look at some of the stuff that he's done, you're like, that's a photograph. Yep. And I, I've just been very fortunate to sit there and actually watch him work. And it's like when you watch nothing turn into holy crap, how did you do that? Like, it's I don't understand how folks do stuff like that, man. I just don't understand how you pull that out of your head. Where does it come from? I would take some Max Grundy artwork too. He's pretty badass. Automotive artwork is always a good thing. I was trying to find the name. Keith Chulik, a guest from a couple of weeks ago. He's got a friend that does some really kick ass stuff too, but I can't remember her name. I know there's uh, Gear Duran's out in Vegas. He's also really, he does some amazing graffiti stuff. Definitely a car dude too. Um, so now we're all sitting here like searching for artwork. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of who uh, who it was, but not. not well, now that looking. I've got the new building up, I, I'm probably going to have to get some automotive artwork as well. I've I've got some pictures saved that of uh, various, you know, me driving various cars that are going to have to go up, but probably some really you know classic, uh, good looking artwork would would be good for Christmas too. I like that idea. Oh man, I'm looking at this uh, Pinstripe Chris's page right now. Man, he's got a bunch of twenty and thirty dollar prints that are just yep badass. I love his little Martian prints, his Martian artwork. Stuff's cool. I'm gonna have to track it down. He's got a Tudor Roadster that's just oh a Tudor Roadster. Well, it's it, it is pretty damn like. Well, what, you need to wouldn't that this be car. a wouldn't that be a fat? Do you mean a that would a be a Tudor? That would be a, be a fat. Not a Tudor roadster. A Tudor, a a Tudor is a type of architecture. Tudor hot rod thing. <laughs> is it Tudor or Tudor revival? Because I'm, I'm interested. T U R D O R is how it's spelt. Forder. Forder. Tudor. Nope. Forder and a Tudor. What about a Noter? A Noter. <laughs> you got one of them, you got one of them Noter cars. <laughs> a hatchbacker. <laughs> Hey, hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna text you a a noter car. We're sharing a a five der. That's not a roadster, bro. I know it's not. Well, whatever. It's a hot rod. It's a hot rod. That's a two door sedan. It's just bad. A roadster. A roadster has uh no, no side top, glass man. and no top, bro. Here, there, there's, there's your, roadster. your roadster. Okay. Shush. Yep. That is cool, though. That's badass. I would I would rock that. Okay, I just texted you guys the note door. Noter? The noter? noter? Yes. And this is if you guys want to get together and get this for me for Christmas, that would be awesome. Pinstripe Chris is going to town, man. He's got some like, yeah, that's That's a noter roadster. The hell are you going to do with that? Put a bay mower on it and cut the grass? What am I going to do with that? Probably run London to Brighton race or the London Bright and run. I mean, it's a it's a it's a tractor. You put a belly mower on it and cut the grass. No, it is a fine automobile. Would one be wearing an as an ascot while piloting that automobile? Well, if I was piloting it, yes. It's mandatory. It's not mandatory, but if if I own it, if that's what I'm going to wear. Good lord, this dude is epic. I have never seen him before. Thank you for turning me on to this dude. I will, uh, I will buy some stuff from him. Yeah, he's he's probably my favorite artist right now. Him and Max Grundy for sure. This is Stefan stuff. Okay, so we got to remember we're an audio podcast we and we're looking at pictures podcast? again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Right. That's true. But I mean, so artwork definitely high on the list this year. 
Yeah, what about, it's huge. What about sunglasses? Well, I was going to say I did find uh, go to Ardly, uh, Oddly Artistic on Facebook. That's a friend of Keith's, and she does some amazing work too. So, so and John, actually, before we get into sunglasses, John's going to want a, a new um, editing software because this show has gone so far off the rails that he's going to need something to make it easier to edit it. John has bought a whole bunch of editing software in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Never mind. He's bought his if own you gifts. were here early to the show, you would have found that out because Will and I were talking about all the stuff I've got and I'm trying to teach my. So sunglasses. I would also take one of those one of those new Garmin catalysts, driving performance optimizer. They, they're pretty cool. It's a Garmin, but it's it's like a go that way really fast if something gets in your way turn kind of Garmin that actually is a driving coach built in. Pretty cool. Only a thousand dollars. Do what? Where were you going? Sunglasses. When I sunglasses. Yeah. That's what Will was talking about. Yeah. Uh, some, I, I totally agree with you unless you wear prescription eyewear and then it gets ridiculous. I think my last pair of Ray-Ban prescription eyewear was, it was getting up there. It wasn't quite what Sean's um, driving coach cost. That's why you need vision insurance because my Ray-Ban prescription Ray-Bans were actually reasonably priced. But I see, I usually don't need vision insurance except for glasses because being diabetic, all my eye exams and all of that kind of stuff is taken care of under major medical because it's a symptom of diabetes. Really? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I can't remember. Um, the formerly local eye doctor uh, that sponsored all the events around town that now is sold out, um, I would see. For, was it the first time? I think first time I went to see him, I saw his daughter and she said, Oh yeah. She goes, you don't have to worry about this. And I thought, well, it would have been nice if somebody would have told me this. And, you know, I've been going to lens crafters. It was a neat, neat thing to find out. So, so I, I mean, that's, so if you're diabetic, you can, insurance may vary. That's solid advice for all drivers though. Actually uh, vision is important yeah. for, for driving anything. Well, in, unless you get a, uh, unless you get a Tesla, which can drive itself, kind of, sort of, maybe. That's true. That is true. I'd take a Tesla for Christmas. Oh, you, I would really? take one, but I'd sell it. Would you? I'd... You'd cut the body off of it and make a hot rod. Uh, yeah, that's that a good idea. Cool. If somebody gave me one, that's probably <laughs> what I would do. Yeah, I mean, it would not be where, hard where I yeah. live in. Northeast Alabama, it's just not, it's just not supported yeah. yet. Hey, if you and, yeah. if you it's steal it, it becomes Edison. <laughs> right, and so you know it would be more of a pain in my butt than it would be enjoyable. You know, because those cars are enjoyable to drive; they're fun. Nobody in Gadsden has charging terminals. Um, it's just it's just not supported in our area very well. So, and I've tried, I've tried, I've. <laughs> I've reached out to Tesla a couple of different times about putting, you know, charging terminals at Big Oak Garage, you know, at least one to kind of make it a destination for Tesla owners. Uh, but even they, you know, they emailed me back and we're just like, you know, there's not enough, there's not enough stuff going on in your area to, uh, to make it happen. So, you know, they need to have the, the traffic already driving through basically to, to justify yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you could you could do the right. the right. or 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 it's got to be like a really cool destination, you know. And I mean, I think they go right, right, you know. But I mean, maybe more Teslas would come through your area if they could charge. Right, <laughs> it's kind of like which which comes first, right. <laughs> the you know the chicken or the egg. <laughs> I'm sure I'm yeah. sure they want more cars in the area that, you know, people drive locally and whatnot. I mean, I, I understand. You need one of their, their battery pack system, one of those six garage bays that you have, and you can get their uh, their recharging roof system on your house. And then you just, you'll, you'll have your, your own personal Tesla showroom, basically. 
Well, you know, if 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 you have, have an area they want to be in, they'll they will send you the chargers for free. That I didn't know yeah. that. I had no idea. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, like if you if you submit to Tesla about wanting a charging terminal and they think that you know it benefits their, their customers, then yeah, they'll send you a, a terminal. That's actually pretty cool. So you still pay for the electric. You still yeah. pay for the electricity. Yeah, you pay for the electric. Unless, I, unless I guess it's a pay terminal. But even, I mean, that would be really cool though. Especially like if you wanted, if you were going to buy a Tesla and you had a location that was high traffic and potentially you know didn't have enough superchargers around, that'd be that'd be a pretty cool perk, wouldn't it? Now, now I could have I could buy one and put it there, but. You know that that wasn't really the point. Um, you know, not that I'm looking for handouts or anything. But what's the price of a supercharger? Just out of curiosity. Oh, I didn't even ask. <laughs> I, I, uh, it's it's in the if you have to ask category. Yeah, I mean, I was just like, no, no. I support, you, but not quite that much. Well, I'm going to say what we asked for that I can actually put affiliate links on the site or in the notes. I will. Um, we've been going at it probably probably about an hour. I've got one more uh, thing. So, okay. One one more. And I'm I know it can be put in in a, a link to our affiliate. It would be like a, a cameras that go in your car that record while you're driving. Dash, um, da- dash cams. Yep. Oh yeah. Front dash cam and a rear, you know, a rear facing cam, you know, real good if, if you have uh, kids and you know, they're good for saving your, your ass. Or watch any of the Russian dash cam videos. Oh my God. I can get on YouTube and go for days. Russia is totally the wild, wild west. I'll throw out one more that can have some various links to but seeing I just built the new building and intentionally put the 14 foot ceiling height in it, I did that for a reason. And that is so I can get four post lifts mm. into the building. So if anybody wants to, you know, hop on and like get like a Titan lift or something for me, you know, for Christmas, be more than happy to uh, put that in my new building. I think the Garmin can go in the affiliate list. Keeping in my video game childlike nature um the playstation 5 is getting ready to come out and there's a launch edition gran turismo 7 that comes in the gulf delivery i would uh if we can find an affiliate link for that let's put that up in there because good lord it's it's just gorgeous (laughs) it's so pretty like i don't need it at all but i want it just because it's got the gulf delivery all right (laughs) I mean, I got, I got one more. That's it. One more. I promise. <laughs> yeah, one, one more. more. One more. <laughs> one more. And this is more for everybody else, not me, because I've got like three of them. But like an OBD2 scanner. You can get them cheap now. Yeah. Um, you know, it's good for every car guy to have one. You know, your check engine light comes on. Plug it in there. See what it is. Could be some, could be something simple. You know, it could be something major. They're, they've got them now to where they're very very easy to read and you know for less than 200 bucks you can get a pretty decent one that um you know that would get the job done and turn your check engine lock especially if you got to go get your car inspected if the code keeps recurring and you keep turning it off is it really a problem (laughs) No, it's just like the noise. It's just like the noise coming from the engine. When you turn the radio up, the noise in the engine goes. That's it. Eyes. I say it usually goes back to the color of That's the awesome. warning light that I'm turning off. If it's emissions, red or if, red, red if or orange. If it's an emissions check engine light and you're in Alabama, not a problem. <laughs> you know what works really well? Black. <laughs> just get a roll of black electrical tape. You cut a little section off. Put it right yeah. over that light. You, just take the bulb out. Take you know? the bulb out. There you go. <laughs> That's what was my Tahoe. I'm like, man, this thing's got to have a check engine light. But it was running like teetotal dog crap. 
And um, I put my scanner in there. Of course, it had codes. And I'm like, what the hell? So I finally I pulled my dash apart. And, yeah, somebody somebody <laughs> taking the bulb out of it. So. I hate my car. It emails me. You know, if I got a low tire pressure, it shows up on the, the Ford app. And then it emails me that I've got a low tire. And it's an it's a yellow or what? An orange light. I don't have to worry about it when it turns red. It doesn't matter how much air I put in the alpha or take out of the alpha. It always has a low tire. Doesn't matter how much is in there. It's just low. And they, I take it in to have it looked at, and it's like, oh, the sensors are good. Obviously not. <laughs> Either that or it's just it's picking <laughs> alternate days to say left front tire is low, right rear tire is low, left rear tire is low. It just, it just doesn't. There's no rhyme or reason. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and wrap this. Wait, 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 one, more, one more. One more. Eric wants a Zamboni. <laughs> I'm kidding. Go ahead and wrap it, John. <laughs> Derek wants a Zamboni. Diecast model of Zamboni. <laughs> okay. Only a Zamboni. I'm out of here. One more. One more. One more. I'm out. Don't want a snowmobile or motorcycle. Derek only wants a Zamboni. Thank you for listening, and remember to look us up at nodragongloves.com. There you can find back episodes, links to products we recommend, and links to all of our social media. Be sure to tell a friend about us. No Dragon Gloves is edited and produced by J. Lewis Productions.